Uh, what's up, bitches? Uh, this is Johnny Cross. Um, thought we would do a painting chat. Um, we might get some guests. I'm working on it. I always say that, though. Um, so, Quake City has come. The Quake City has gone. Um, I haven't really done a video talking about Quake City, so I thought I'd do one now. Um, so, Quake City was about... Uh, Quake City was about a month ago now. Um, yeah, about a month ago. And big San Francisco tournament, big deal. Fantastic tournament. Um, honestly, if you're going to go to one tournament on the West Coast, it's going to be Quake City. Um, there's really no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, it's just a fantastic tournament. And it's a fantastic time. Everyone should go at least once, I think. Um, but not if that means I won't get a ticket. Um, so, yeah. Uh, basing the Skull Cannon Cygor kit um, that I made. So it's not really a kit now, is it? Ah, uh, it's been a while. It has been a long fucking while. Anyway, uh, Quake City. Um, I'm not really going to go over my games. Uh, took a really fucking fluffy bunny, just drunk hammer list. Um, and that pretty much describes my weekend in a nutshell. Drunk hammer. Um... I had no testing even remotely sober at Quake City, and I luckily did not stay sober at Quake City. Um, yeah, I didn't stay sober. Um, in fact, I was drinking in unison with my Centigore units, uh, so every time the Centigore had to take a drink, I took a drink. Um, it made a really fun tournament. Uh, I was in a five-way tie for best sports, which is pretty big for me. Um, didn't end up taking it. Uh, I guess if I had sucked one more dick, I could probably have gotten best sports. But... Quake City. Done and dusted. Um... What's next on the horizons for Johnny Crass and crew? Well, what is next is a tournament called Victory or Death up in Canada. Um, now you may be saying Canada seems like a really long ways for you. It's a 15-hour drive. Um, why do you want to go? If you're watching this and you actually enjoy the content, um, you'll really like Trump Hammer. It's just profanity mixed in with a little bit of Warhammer mixed in with a history class. Um, it's just a fucking amazing podcast. Um, anyway, they're putting on their first ever event and I knew I wanted to be part of it. Um, it's going to be about 40, 46 players. Um, and I'm just really excited. So, so, I um, bought my ticket, and I'm bringing up two other guys from California. So we're going up there in force. Hopefully we'll walk away with a trophy. Um... But yeah, we're just fucking going up there in force to have a bit of fun. Um, so, comp is relatively nothing. Um, but there's two things. Two armies have gotten concessions in the comp. 
One is Beastmen and one is Tomb Kings. Now, I own both these armies, and I was kind of torn on what to take, but not really because 2014 is the year of the Beast, um, be it Demons or Beastmen. So, Beastmen. Um, now, the comp for Beastmen is Beastmen get to use real person ambush, uh, which is nice. Um, and all our monsters are 100 points cheaper. That means a Beastman Giant is 125 points, which is a fucking steal. Um, it's just fucking amazing. 125 points for a Giant is fucking off the chain. Um, so, we are taking Beastman. Now, the list is interesting. I played... The Minostar and Centigore at Quake City, and it did not do that well. I lost four games. Um, well, I lost three and a half games. Uh, sometimes you got to let the Wookiee win. I played one of my friends. He hadn't won a single game. We played last round, and I threw the game for him. Um, anyway. Uh, I have a brain fart here. I decided that I would take uh, Beastman. So the list is fairly simple. It's how many monsters and other small units can I fit on the table. Um, yeah. So it's got Big Doom cranked to the teeth. He's got fucking a ton of toys. It's got a scouting mage on beasts. Um... Got a scouting mage on beasts. It's got a. Um, he's a level four, of course. It's got a BSB on a Razor Gore chariot. Um, it's got a level two on wild with uh, the one turn storm banner. Um, and then I was three chariots, three units of six Ungor Rapers. And three tens of gore with banners. Um, just fills core, gives me fortitude, gives me drops. Um, then has two solo razor gore, a six man unit of scouting herpes, and then two giants, a cygore and a gorgon. And that comes out nicely to 2,499 points. Um, the idea of this list is I have deploy you, and then I fucking run at you. Um, five big griblies, one of which is big doom, followed by a wave of chariots, followed by um, a scouting transformation of Kadon, and maybe a summon of monster from the level two of wild. It's going to be a lot of aggressive, big stompy things in your face really fast. Then there's all the scouters in ambush who come in, threaten war machines, take table quarters, and do all that kind of shit. So it's really a two-prong list, two waves. First wave is the big fucking griblies, then the chariots and the little units to maybe clean something up if I need them to. Um, honestly, I don't know how it's going to go. Um, I never really know how any of my games are going to go. But I know Big Doom can take a unit by himself. I know two giants in a unit is nothing to fucking sniff at. Um, I know Gorgon is fucking boss. I know Cygors are shit. Uh, so the Cygors is just in there. Because he is one of the list's only answers to a demon prince, oddly enough. <laughs> um, it's wishful thinking, but it's thinking. Um... It's just shit like that. So it's a really off-the-chain list. Um, I have honestly no idea how it's going to work out. I haven't even played a game with it. Um, I doubt I'm going to get a game win with it before the tournament. So it's just going to be kind of formulating tactics as we go. Which should be fun. Kind of. Maybe. No. 
Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, do my lips look fucking purple? Maybe I'm fucking dying. Um. Anyway. <sighs> we were doing something. What were we painting? I think we were supposed to be painting. Anyway, I've got to go change my water. I'll be right back. If any special guests come on, that's what I am. No special guests, no viewers. Surprise, surprise. Just look at that. Um, anyway, I think we're going to paint for a little bit. Um, if we get a viewer or a um, guest, we'll go into the usual spiel. Um, so painting this big motherfucker, uh, I'm really excited for him. Pictures to Twitter. Anyway, so as per usual, rings off. I don't. I always seem to get paint on my rings. That bothers me. Um. So what I've been doing in the hobby recently, um, I haven't really been that active in the GW hobby. Now I say GW hobby, and everyone goes off. Oh, Fuck, he started a new game. I did start a new game. And um, I am absolutely, completely in love with it. Um, I have started playing X-Wing. Um, if you know, X-Wing is a game put on by Fantasy Flight Games. Um, uh, and it's a Star Wars-based ship dogfight game. Um, maybe it's a bit more space combat than dogfight. But dogfight works for the description I'm going to give. Um, overall, it's great. I, I played Battlefleet Gothic for a little while, and I love space combat games. And honestly, they're also not entirely the same. It's little dinky ships fighting each other instead of big cruisers. It gives me the same feel that I got. It fills the same notch I needed filled from the days of Battlefleet Gothic. It's a space combat game where 
you just blow the ever loving shit out of each other and try to outmaneuver the other person. Um, and yeah, it's just a really great game. Um, now, one thing I'm gonna preface, but by saying, is everyone says it's a cheap game to start. The box is cheap, but after that, I would say it's on par with a Warhammer Fantasy Army, um, as far as cheapness goes. Maybe a bit less, but honestly, it is not that cheap of a game to start playing. Um, at least in my humble opinion. Uh, there are some things that are nice about it. Um, there are pre-paints, but me being the sadist I am, I hate pre-paints. So I've been repainting all the ships that I've been getting my hands on. Um, the rules are really tight. FAQs are coming out like mad every time there's a question that's kind of submitted. So you're working with a games, a younger games company who cares about other things besides profit margins, um, it seems. The tournament scene is really well supported by the games company. Um, I don't know how they feel about proxies and uh, conversions and stuff. I haven't really looked into that yet. But honestly, in the Star Wars universe, it's kind of hard to do proxies and conversions. Um, that makes sense. So maybe, maybe this is not a game for the converter and hobbyist in us, but honestly, I've been really enjoying repainting the ships. Uh, you can see those on my Twitter. Maybe I'll put up a video in a little bit about um, repainting the ship, because honestly, the ships are such great models and such a great scale that a repaint, they're about as big as... Um, I'd say most ships are about as big as a Chaos Warrior. Um, I'm pretty sure none of us have painted those before. But, um, yeah, new Warriors players are probably watching this video and being like, what's a Chaos Warrior? Uh, the Chaos Warriors are the things that go in the chariots. Just thought you should know. Anyway, um, yeah, so they're about the size of a Chaos Warrior. Just great little models to repaint. Um, yeah, just, it's great. I've been having a ton of fun with it. Um, and it's a really great game. Games normally take about an hour, maybe an hour and a half if you're going slow. Um, I've converted a lot of my magic buddies into playing it, which is nice. Um, I've played a few games with Warhammer people, but on the most part, it's magic dudes who are seeming to be really drawn to it. It's a relaxed miniatures game. No painting requirements, so I've been seeing it start to pop off in my community, kind of, because it's pretty much... It's a miniatures game where all you have to do is buy the miniatures. Um, he's starting to get big and blue, which ex is exactly what we want. Because um, he is just another one of the monsters. This guy's been sitting on my shelf forever, and I've been wanting to get paint on him, wanting to get paint on him, but just haven't had the time. So, finally got the time, and painting him up has been really fun, or it is really fun, because um, it is definitely not over. And it's always fun painting a model that you partially, you re-sculpted, because once you get the paint on it, some of those details that you sculpted that you didn't know if they'd look good or not, 
really start to either blend or pop. Um, and I don't know, it just feels really good seeing something that before you could notice the seam, and then once you start putting paint on it, the seam just disappears. It's a really great, great feeling in my mind. Um, but we were talking about X-Wing. Oh, sorry, I just get really distracted really easily. Um, yeah, so we were talking about X-Wing. Now, the thing about X-Wing that you're going to have to understand is, from what I can tell, the tournament scene is... Here I go talking about tournament scenes when I'm claiming to be a hobbyist these days. Um, the tournament scene is kind of... It's only in its... I think this is its third or second year. So it's still very fledgling, very um, kind of new. So right now I haven't been actively seeking tournaments because um, there's no, um, at least in the U.S. from what I've seen, there's no painting awards as of yet. Um, there's no... It's just straight up who's the better pilot, which is good, but I'd like to see... Because at the end of the day, it's still a miniatures game. So I would like to see, personally, a bit more um, hobby get added into the tournament scene. Now, maybe I'm just not looking hard enough. Maybe this is already there. Honestly, I haven't been checking that much yet. Um, it's something I've just kind of sunk my teeth into. I almost own one of every ship. <laughs> um, um, don't tell the girlfriend that. I've kind of been just buying them in a trickle pattern, just hoping that no one really notices that every time I bust out the kit, there's a new recently painted ship that I'm busting out to. Um, another thing is it's really easy to transport. I have pretty much everything I need to play the game, minus the ships, in what I can only describe as a little nuts and bolts box. Um, everything pretty much fits in there. So it's a really easy game. I just... I used to bring magic decks when I'd go out of town and I knew there was a game store. Now I'm just tossing this in my, what used to be my magic bag. And I'm just hoping to find a game. <laughs> um, and this game is popular enough to where I seem to be able to find games. And if not, um, I've been able to give people demo games, which I'm really liking. Um, I really like giving demo games for a game that's very very fast-paced and very cut and dry, easy to learn. Um, to anyone who's ever gotten a get demo game of Warhammer before, you know demo games are really, really hard in Warhammer. Um, it's just for some reason, they never turn out well. It's either you don't have fun or you feel like the other person is just throwing the game for you or, I don't know, they don't get done because you realize how long Warhammer is. I don't know. Every Back in the day when I was still getting into Warhammer, I never had a good demo game of Warhammer at like a game store. All my games were learning in the garage, like an addition later. <laughs> Just try and get all the blue on him. Pretty much, he's just going to be this big blue gnarly motherfucker um, with giant tits and a huge dick. Um, cause it wouldn't be one of my models without a massive fucking penis. Uh, 
Yeah, it just it, it just wouldn't. I mean, who doesn't want to put a penis as big as a high elf spearman on a giant? No one. Everyone thinks giant, and they think shove down pants. What are you going to find down a giant's pants? Well, let's think about this for a moment. What will you most likely find down a giant's pants? Um, considering how GW sculpts female models, you're going to probably find, if it's a female giant, just a flat Barbie space. Um, if it's a male giant, you're going to find a big old giant song. It's just going to happen. I mean, come on, it's a fucking giant. Um, giant dick is... It's just a part of the Warhammer world. Um, shove down pants has been attacked since I was... since I can remember getting into this game. That's why I bought a giant originally as a kid, because I thought it was just hilarious shoving something in your pants. Um, this was about the same time that I discovered porn, so those two things kind of went hand in hand. Um, or hand in pants, depending on how you look at it. I've actually been really funny in this episode. Fuck. Good for me. Good for me. Anyway, um... Uh, let's see what else has been going on. Um, so, yeah, X-Wing has been great. Fantastic game. I urge you to check it out. Um, you will not regret just at least buying the basic starter set and then, like, two other ships. It's, like, 50 bucks for um, two ships and the starter set, and that's enough to hold you over for... A while, like I don't know. I bought um, new tear in the pants. Um, I bought a starter set and then a tie advanced and some other, and then a rebel ship. I forget what the rebel ship was, but yeah, it's it's just been a great game. Great game. I urge anyone to check it out if you're a gamer or a card gamer. But I don't think many card gamers watch my channel. Because I don't think I've ever done a segment on magic. Ever. Um, uh, so, let's see. Um, the ETC is this week of this recording. Will be ETC 2014. Yeah. Um, as always, I've not been invited. Um, I think Team America is just too afraid of my Warhammer achievements, and they just know that it wouldn't be fair if they put me on their team. So, um, I just assume that's why I haven't gotten. My ETC invite yet, um, but who knows? Maybe next year Bulgaria will claim me as a citizen just so I can uh, I can play for ETC Bulgaria. But I don't know. I think that'd be fun. I look like a Bulgarian, right? I think so. Anyway, um, sorry if I offended any Bulgarians. Um, but yeah, so ETC, if you've ever watched this channel, you know how I feel about the ETC, um, but that does not mean that I would not love to play in it one year. I just wish there was a painting requirement at the ETC, because these days I've come to realize that all I really care about in fantasy is painting. Um, it's the only bit of the hobby that does not seem to, uh, drastically change, and it's the only bit of the hobby where 
you see it's the only bit of the hobby that's not really luck based I guess I should say because well yes there's a certain amount of skill in winning a tournament at the end of the day there's also a certain amount of luck involved but when it comes to a uh, painting you know who the good painters are. So that's what I've been really focusing on is stepping up my painting game because I want people to want to come see my armies. Um, that is that is the goal. Um, I recently got some mammoth praise from some painters who I personally view as far superior to myself and any praise from their like is astounding um, recently I got praise for a piece from Brendan Palmer if you don't know Brendan Palmer then um, welcome to the 21st century this is um, the year is 2014 and you've clearly been living under a rock so congratulations on figuring out the internet um Brendan Palmer is a fucking beast honestly if you don't know who he is stop this fucking um, show right now and go check his shit out cuz he is fucking off the chain um yeah God, I hate painting big models. I love and hate painting big models. I love it because I love how they turn out. I hate it because it takes fucking goddamn forever. Um, let me get some better brush cleaner. Uh, there's parts to this that are sticking with yellow when I'm trying to paint them. Yeah, but the goal is to get at least some kind of painting something in the near future. So that's what we've been doing. Holy shit, we have two viewers. Um, holy shit. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, see if I can get up uh, the thing where it lets me see the comments. This is going to take a lot of fucking wash. Um, so, if you don't know how I paint my blues, um, and you've seen pictures and you want to know how to paint my blues, it's really simple. Um, I enjoy cheating techniques, I always have. So, here's a quick cheating technique for you. Uh, you get a darker blue uh, base coat. Um, I really like... I guess the blue used to be enchanted blue. Uh, now it's techless blue figures. Um, but it's a really nice deep blue, like a mage blue. Um, and I do that as a base. And then I take this super, it's almost like a white blue. And uh, it's called skink blue. Um, also figures. I use two of the fucking cheapest uh, cheapest fucking units of paint named after them to paint a fucking really fast army. It's kind of funny. At least uh, brand farts, brand farts, everyone loves brand farts. 
I fucking forgot. You know, one day, I think I'm going to be super fucking clever. And I'm going to be, um... I'm going to hide a battle report in one of these paint and chats. And then only dedicated viewers will get to see an actual battle report. Because I haven't done a battle report in ages. Um... But yeah, so you dry brush this light blue over all the raised areas until it looks like that. Oh, I can't really see it that well. But it's pretty much a super light blue with a super dark contrast. Then what I do is I take a um, this dark purple wash that GW makes called Druchy Violet. And I pretty much bathe that motherfucker in Druchy Violet. Um, this creates this really, um, really interesting blue color. And then you go over it one more time with a little highlight of the light blue. Um, just on the edges that need it. Or on the edges you missed. But yeah, when painting big monsters, dry brushes are your best friend. Don't ever forget that. We lost that one viewer.
This is turning out a lot more purple than normal. Bad thing about painting big models, and then out of wash. Because I've just run out of Drucci Violet. And I'm not done with the model. <laughs> 